Alright guys, here's Ryan. In a scale of 0 to 10, how cool do I look with this mask? Huh? Huh? Anything below 9, you're out of here, man. Alright. Good enough with the mask. Welcome to another live session with me, Ryan. I'm your host, uh, the SolidWorks Master, and I'm here to make life easier for you. So, before we start, I'm gonna tell you approximately what we are gonna go through in this session, and as always, at the end of the session, we will have some Q&A. Hi, Mohamed, you already wrote your question. I will show you how you can calculate the mass of your component in SOLIDWORKS at the end of this video. All right, so stay tuned. Who else is here? Any regulars? I know Mohamed is a regular. Welcome. Now, let's just show you my SOLIDWORKS page. This is it. And I have a big announcement, guys. I'm gonna tell you now, and also again at the end of the session for the people who join us later. So if you go to the, wait, 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 I'm clicking wrong. If you go to my website, this is it, uh, cyberstutorials.net slash ultimate course, all right? So you will come across this page and you have the direct link in the description of this video below as well. You can just click on it. If you are interested in a full A to Z SOLIDWORKS course that we are about to release in a month or so, make sure to sign up. Just leave your email there, and by the time it's out, you will be notified, my friend. All right, enough with that. Good, guys, in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to model a multi-body, in a multi-body mode, to create something like this. Do you know what this is? This is like a sieve, okay? Some people think, because, uh, mostly engineers work with SOLIDWORKS, the parts that you have to create have, have to be gears, gearbox, engine parts, whatever. No, dude, this also requires CAD modeling because if you are a manufacturer of such components, as cheap as it is, you still have to do some injection molding and for that you need to create the parts in order to create the molds, do the tolerancing, GDNT, and etc. So, why did I choose this ugly part? because it has a specific feature to it that is perfect for the example today. So if you pay attention to this part, it has a white or two white components and a red component. The red component is like, is rubber-like and the white component is like hard plastic. So how can we go about designing something like this, which is created of two different materials in one design at one go? Let's just do this, all right? I'm gonna start off by creating the whole thing at once. Let me show you. So the diameter over here is about, uh, how much is this? Let's just say 20 centimeters, 25 centimeters, all right? The diameter here is 25 centimeters and the depth of this component is about 15 and the small parts at the end is 10 all right 25 15 10. so i'm gonna go ahead and start designing or drawing something that i can revolve around an axis because it's symmetric for that i'm gonna start off by drawing a vertical line oh wait a minute i think i'm in a 3d sketch mode yeah i could be just to be sure. Hi Shiva, how are you doing man? All right, so this is my axis of revolution. All right. And I am going to draw something with the spline like this and connect this to this here. We said the diameter above is how much? 25 centimeters, so in millimeters, 10 times the amount. And over here, we said it's about 10. All right. And the height, 15, so 150. Oh, I like it when I'm almost close to the number. So, we're gonna start off with this. Let's just offset the whole thing. Inward, click OK. As a matter of fact, no, don't click OK. Go back, I just control Z on the keyboard. Reverse, end caps, arcs, lines, arcs, nothing. Thank you very much for disappointing me. Ah, it did work. All right, 
So I'm going to trim this area over here so I can easily go back and do a revolve like this. Now, this is supposedly the whole thing if it had only one part or one material, one component. But we have one hard material in white, one rubber material in red, right? So let's look at it from this angle. And I'm going to create a plane about here. This is going to be the hard white part on the bottom. So I'm going to click OK and another plane here. Look, to have the hard white part on the top, right click OK. Now we have two planes. Now, easily you go to insert, you go to features and you find split, which is the feature perfect to cut your part or split your part. So once I do that, I click the middle part and click OK. By doing this, I did something interesting. If you pay attention to the property manager over here on the left, we have a folder called solid bodies and next to that there is parentheses and it reads three. It means you have three solid bodies in your drawing environment right now. All right. Hi, Alele. Welcome. Um, so we're going to get rid of the middle component. OK, because this is the rubber part and we're going to design it a little bit differently. So by going here on this solid body folder, you can click on these components and realize that split one happens to be the part or the component in the middle. So I'm just going to press delete on the keyboard easily and boom, you get rid of it. OK, now we have our two hard, two hard plastics. Now we're going to create the rubber one, all right? So I hate to see the planes after they have served their purpose, so we're gonna just hide them, all right? Anybody is going to object with that, bring it on. So time to create the rubber one, and for that I'm gonna look at my component in the cross-sectional view, why? Because it helps me to see the thickness of the wall and know exactly where the inner and the outer side of the rubber wall is going to be. So again, I'm going to use the spline and place two points in the middle. So it will give me flexibility to just uh, play around with this. Let's see if we can make these two tangential. No, but no worries. Right here to save the day. And we can make it a little bit more appealing to the eye. Depends who cares about the design of a sieve, but do you see that? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. We're going to go create something similar to this. Okay. So it goes down a little bit flat. Then it turns inward. Then it goes like this. Then it goes like this. Da, 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 da. Okay. Um, we're going to leave it at this point and use offset again like that. That's fine, but we don't want to end the caps in this case. Okay, we don't. And here we are coming a little bit short. We're not connected. So we're going to have to manually add some sketch to that. I would deliberately go inside the other component, leave it there. And I can maybe drag this one. No, oh, it's fully defined. So we just manually extend this one as well. Go inside the other component, leave it there as well. And a center line to revolve it. Next is easy, but tricky. We go to revolved and we see the preview of this rubber component that is supposedly going to, uh, to be there. Before I click OK, or actually, let me click OK, even though I should not to see you what goes wrong. If I click OK, the whole thing will be connected, merged into one solid body. And if you pay attention here, you ruined the whole thing, man. You just created one solid body, which we did not want. So I'm going to go back, click here and edit the feature and uncheck this merge result. Whenever you are creating your second onward solid component in SolidWorks, you get this merge result option which means this newly 
uh, this new to be solid body that you're about to create is it going to be merged into the existing one or not all right so we don't want them to be merged into one solid body therefore we click ok and even though they look this uh, look that'll okay. the color looks the same they're not actually the same body the proof for that is i can set my appearance to select bodies select this one change it to red give me some ferrari red you know and click ok we can do it again go to here go to here change it to white all right so we just did something like this okay it doesn't have any holes and a lot of stuff had to be done in order to have it uh created with a lot of with all the details but that's not the point we are going to save these three components that we have over here into three different solid uh files solidworks files in your folder so the way to do it or the way i would do it and i recommend you to do that is to select the first two pre press delete on the keyboard then this feature called delete key body will show up and you can click OK. You get rid of the two hard plastics and you will be left with this one. Now I just save this as the rubber part. OK, and it will be saved. Now I still have this feature over here. I can edit this. Now this time I'm going to select this red rubber part and unselect this one. Click OK, save it as top white part again quickly do the same on uh, yep what kind of noise was that i get a like for that like this video because i made a funny random noise line bottom white part all right now we get to go to assembly mode and if you wish to assemble them you can next component you bring these two boom and boom why only one boom doesn't matter the top white part also boom now look we have three components but we made them into in one solid um solidworks mode that helps you to know your exact dimensions. You don't have to go back and measure the inner diameter of the top part and apply it to the lower part and so on. You get to see that. So this was the first part or the set first section of the multi-body mode. And now I'm gonna show you some cool tri trips, trips, tips and tricks, tips and tricks. So, um, when you are working in a multi-body mode uh, there are different options that get available to you that are not they don't even exist when you're working in a single body mode all right for example if i'm going to create um let's see if we can do it to this one no it does not apply to this part but let's let's say i'm going to create some cuts only into this rubber part all right not to d2 white parts for that i'm gonna draw some random component oh no uh, middle one one random slot like this and leave it like that let's just say i want to use this profile and use extruded cut to just cut it through the whole part all right so i go to the features tab go to extruded cut and extend it all the way out now look if I press OK, let's see what happens. All three components get a piece of that cut. We don't want this. What we want instead is that these two components on the top and the bottom stay untouched while the rubber part in the middle gets the cut. So for that, this feature scope is now added to your property manager, which was not there before. If you don't believe me, go try it for yourself. And it allows you to choose what bodies, what solid bodies or surface bodies, which we have not learned yet, uh, is going to be affected by this feature. For this, we only take the rubber part, even though the sketch and the preview are going through the white top part and the white bottom part. 
When I click OK, only the middle part is going to be affected, which is perfect. In a lot of cases, when you are working in a very complicated multi-body mode, if you're assembling, I don't know, a camera, which has a lot of components and you want to affect only one, it is perfect to choose it and all the other components, solid bodies will be untouched. All right, guys. So this is for the beginner solid body introduction. I get questions now. There is one question hanging already. Um, how to calculate mass of a part? Let's just calculate the mass of this part, shall we? Even though, Muhammad, guys, be careful. There is a question from Muhammad. He's asking how to calculate mass of a part. And by part, he means solid bodies, I assume. Well, the, let's just show you the wrong way. Then I will tell you the right way. The wrong way is to go to evaluate, go to mass properties, and immediately you see the mass of your, uh, whatever you have in the middle. If it's a single component, if it's a multi-body, whatever, you get to see it here. It's 1096 grams or about one kilo. All right. But it is one kilogram without us applying any material without us assigning any material to these three components and when we don't do this SOLIDWORKS by default applies the um, uh, density of water to these components and this is a trick and this is a trick question actually you face in the CSWP exam a CSWP exam is stands first of all it stands for certified SOLIDWORKS professional by the time to uh, you get to that level um, you realize if you do not apply material, you still get some value. And in that exam, they give you a model to create. And the question is not whether or not you can model it. The question is, how much does this component weigh at the end? And they assume some people will forget to assign the material. Therefore, they include the mass of that component, rightly modeled, rightly done, but with the density of water, in the answers. So a lot of people uh, make that mistake first time until they learn it the hard way. So you can right click here, go to edit material. If it's going to be plastics, you go to plastics, you find it, apply it to whatever uh, solid body you want and you measure it again, you get a different value, but this is how you measure it. All right, Shiva, hi bro, Alale, hi. Uh, guys, by the way, Alale is the, the one who voiced over two of my videos. The one with the thread and the one with the new planes. A lot of you uh, asked who she is. She is here. Hi. Mohammed, boom, boom back. Ankit, hey, did you search for SolidWorks Visual? Oh, man. I, um, oh, God. Oh, God. Sorry, man. I'm, I'm really sorry. No, no, I did not. I completely forgot. I owe you. I owe you that. Can I get back to you on this or is it? Um, you got one over me. Man. Cyrus Visual. Let me try it. I'm going to have to remove this part from the video. Mohammed Fuad Ahmed says hi. Hi back. Hi back. All right, guys. Uh, I'm still here. We have been online for 21 minutes and 59 seconds. We are going to stay here until minute 30. So eight more minutes for questions. Anyone, anything, if it's related, even better. Until then, I'm going to start drinking my tea from my bucket because a cup is too small for me. So I'm going to have to drink it by liter. Thank you, Ankit. Thank you. Thank you for your compliment. But oh, by the way, guys, Ankit, Fuad, um, Muhammad, whoever joined us later at the air, uh, start of this video, I showed people I am releasing a full course on SolidWorks. And if you're interested, go to the link in the description below. You will end up here, enter your email here, and you will get notified. All right, guys? SolidWorks Motion. Um, I recently did that video, prepared that video for this course that I just announced, Shiva, because she was asking about SOLIDWORKS Motion. Uh, it's a very tricky one. It's a lot of times it's um, 
I have to prepare everything in advance and show you what could go wrong because most of the time something goes wrong. It goes wrong and it goes wrong until you fix it. Then it will go, it will go wrong in the next step until you fix it, fix it, fix it. And then it will run smoothly. So uh, it's not gonna be a smooth video. It's gonna be a back and forth, back and forth, fix and trial and error until it works. Uh, okay, let me see. Gems. Nice shades, bro. Mango Bite. I like the name, to be honest. Mango Bite. Flex Command Explained. Flex Command. Did I not? No, I did not. Flex Command. I can explain it in a video. Sure, why not? I do have a tutorial for it on the website, but I can explain to you. It usually has four sub uh, features for stretch, bending, tapering, or twisting. But this is not the video for it. James, I will definitely do that next time or one of the next times. If I get more uh, requests on that, definitely. Um, that one, oh, Mango Bite, sorry. Mango, I said that. Ankit said, is it paid SolidWorks course? Yes, Ankit. It is a paid course because it has taken a long time to create. And at the beginning of the release, when we release it, it's going to be cheaper, but later on the price will go up because the, more material would be added to that. So in the beginning, it's best to buy it in the beginning when we release it. It's not going to be completely 100% of the, all the contents inside. You get less of the contents, but cheaper. But nevertheless, when we release new co uh, contents, it will be added to that and you don't have to, you don't have to pay the rest. Um, Mohammed said, okay, um, Mohammed Umar said, how to rendering without any software? Uh, do you want to render with your eyes, dude? You, you need some software. You cannot render without any software. Or do you mean render in SOLIDWORKS? That, in that case, that's uh, 360, but without it, it's not possible. We can do one video for rendering. I'm not really big, of, big fan of rendering SOLIDWORKS, but we can. Hi again, Ale. Lol Gaming. Uh, I'm not sure if you misspelled gaming by on purpose or not, but that's not how you write gaming, dude. Can I run SolidWorks 2020 smoothly on i3 third generation processor 8 GB RAM? Well, that's very specific. Um, you can, I if I had to take a guess, but let me tell you, first of all, what, when, whenever you run SOLIDWORKS, you're going to have to go into these settings here. Then when you go to display, uh, where is the details? Display. Am I missing something? Detailing. Uh, here, in image quality. So you're going to have to reduce this a little bit more uh, until it runs smoothly. The higher you go, the slower your computer becomes. And depending on your processor, in this case, i3 is not that strong, but I believe you are still able to run some simple models. The more components you add, the more 2D sketching, especially 2D sketching, that takes a lot of uh, RAM and then it will slow down dramatically. So depends on what you want to do with it. Shiva, you're welcome, bro. Yubet is asking how to add materials. Yubet, you missed it. There is a section in this property manager here called materials. You right click to that and select edit material. Then you have a full library of SOLIDWORKS. You can change it from here, silicon, and apply it to the component. Then everything changes according to that. Mohammed Fuad Ahmed is asking, is this course for beginners? This course starts for very, very beginners, like with no prior experience in SOLIDWORKS and goes all the way to professionals and it prepares you for the CSWP exam. So you can go and take the exam, get your certified SOLIDWORKS, prof uh, certified SOLIDWORKS professional certificate. So from zero to almost the end. Um, Aliu, damn a full course, I'm so excited. Where can I sign up? Uh, if you go to the, Ali, if you go to this uh, link in the description below, uh, you see it in solidworkstutorials.net slash ultimate course. Just give in your email. That's all you have to give at the moment. And as soon as it's out, you will uh, get notified. 
Also, I think there is a pop-up banner in the website. If you go to the website, uh, you will see that you can add it there. Ishan, hey, just wanted to know how is SolidWorks better than Cadia? Well, that's a tricky question because first of all, who said SolidWorks is better than Cadia? SolidWorks is like small sister of Cadia and Cadia is like the big bro. Um, if I had to put it into words, SolidWorks is a mid-end CAD, which is very good for your daily modeling and Cadia is more like high-end. You compare it to Pro E Creo or some or NX and they are both under the umbrella of Dassault system but Katia is um, more capable of doing much larger assemblies, uh, CAM and much more. I'm not an expert in Katia, I've worked with it and the software in Katia starts, I don't know, somewhere in the range of hundreds of thousands or at least around 100,000 full licenses and everything. Correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, but I, that's what I've heard last time. And so it works much cheaper. You can get it for from 6,000 to 13,000, depending on the package you get. But you can do much more in Katia. LOL Gaming says, thank you, you're welcome. Are you? You're welcome too. Ankit, sir, are you design engineer? First of all, I'm not a sir. You can call me Ryan. And I am a biomedical engineer. I'm not a design engineer, no. All right, guys, we have 30 more, 20 more seconds. I think that was all the questions. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for, don't forget to like and subscribe to this video if you're new. And I would really appreciate it if you go to the link in, this, in the description below. Two things, sign up for the course and don't forget to rate me on that Trustpilot link that you see in the description. That means a lot to me. It's kind of a feedback for me to know what kind of videos are doing good. Should I repeat that? Should I change it? So please, if you think this session was um, um, productive for you, let me know by leaving a feedback over there. So one, okay, quickly, Hubert is asking, thank you, Ryan, how does the feature don't work? Hubert, I will cover that in the next video. Please remind me, it's a simple feature that we can go over very fast. Lucifer, nice to see you again. He's asking, when you move your mouse cursor over a part, the part automatically begins to highlight. When it has a lot of details, it takes time. Can I stop this feature? Oh, stop this feature. I've never thought about it. I have to look into it. I honestly, I've never thought about stopping that feature. Let me write it down. Stop highlight. I'll get back to you, Lucifer. You can also email me. How to get motion in model, Mohammed? I said uh, we will cover this in the next videos. Um, sports and games lover is asking, please show the steps. Um, what steps would that be, sports and game lover? Rain, please show the steps. Please show the steps. I think I have to ask what steps that is. Ishan is saying, so it's, it is... Is it fine to learn SOLIDWORKS over CADIA as a graduate mechanical engineer? It's absolutely fine, yes. Yes, it's quite satisfactory. Uh, some companies, you can do the research, for example, Boeing, Porsche, um, I'm not sure who else. There is a list of companies who are working with certain CAD packages, and some of them require CADIA but they usually also provide teaching for that because not many people can work with it directly when they graduate from the uh, mechanical university. So it's definitely okay to learn SOLIDWORKS. You're welcome. Um, steps of the drawing. Sports of this drawing, you can watch this video and you will see it. Lucifer, thank you. He said he loves my videos. I will keep it up. Thank you all for watching and hope to see you soon. Guys, take care, wash your hands. I'm gonna repeat it after a lot of other people, you've heard it enough, but let me say it again. Keep washing your hands. Take care. I'm